teaching physics is probably the best thing I've ever done. I mean, sometimes my husband gets mad because I'm more concerned about my students than I am him. Well, Mary Lou's unique in that she has a physics degree, so she's our only staff member that is trained as a physics teacher. She's really interested in improving her teaching craft, so she's constantly looking at how can she become a better teacher. So she's a young teacher, but she's very, very committed to becoming the best possible physics teacher she can. It was funny, the first time that I went to a job fair, every single person that walked up to me when I said physics, they were like, oh, we need a physics teacher. Or, oh my gosh, can you, you know, are you science and math? And um, they were just so surprised to actually meet someone that was a physics major that wanted to teach. Personally, some of the stuff that I have gotten from the Knowles Fellowship and from PhysTech is the interaction with other teachers. So in PhysTech there was actually another teacher that was going through the program with me and she is now a physics teacher in a high school in California. So I can communicate with her and talk about what are we doing, what do you do that's cool, what can I take from you, what can I give to you. And um, with Knowles there are fellows all over the country. So not only do I get to interact with these fellows and know what's going on in the country in education and in physics, I have all these resources where if I have a question and I'm not sure what's going on, I can get on the phone and call one of my PhysTech um, fellows or one of my Knowles fellows and ask them, like, do you think this is a good lesson? Do you think that I should do this? Oh my gosh, a kid in my class just cheated. What should I do about that? I think in high school is where it starts. We need good teachers to teach the physics classes that students need to become engineers, to come, become scientists, to become the next physicists that are going to change the world. I tell her that it's getting harder and harder to mentor her because she's becoming more and more of just another colleague and she looks less to me for um, you know, help and guidance and looks more at me and says, what are you doing that for? Have you ever tried this? And I go, oh, well, I don't know about that. And we'll sit down and, you know, have a cup of coffee later. We're going, oh, yeah, okay, there's some good ideas here. Where do you find carbon dioxide in your everyday life? Uh, when, I breathe breathe out. Out. when you breathe out, you breathe out carbon dioxide. Where else? Uh, it's in the plants absorb Yep, plants let it out. Six. No. Plants. Actually, <laughs> so do you think that's significant? Yes. Okay. What were you guys sliding across? Plexiglass. Plexiglass. And what did you guys get? 0. 0.3183. 0. 0.3183. Outlier. Wow. So you're very different than experimental area. the other plexiglass group. You're actually pretty close to the metal group, yeah, right? Did. Interesting. Um, it's really important for teachers to be well versed in physics education research so that they know how students are actually constructing their knowledge in the realm of physics and how to teach them so that you can assist them with learning the material the way that they need to learn it. Since I see 130 kids every day in my classroom and probably double that in the halls that I interact with, I see many teachers every day that have a problem come to me, try to have me help them solve the problem, every single day is different. So that makes it fun and exciting. I never, I mean I plan, but I never really know what to expect. So it keeps me on my toes. And just kids are so funny. I mean they say the funniest things. And if you have a good sense of humor when you're a teacher, then you're gonna find, you know, a lot of fun in a lot of the things that students do and say and just the challenge of learning is a nice journey to be on with the students.